If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain Here's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Service of celebration for Derek's life is about to begin. I'm going to ask you to take this opportunity to turn your cell phones off and put them on vibrate, please. Thank you. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when you face down there's a place up there for people like you. If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve, and if you're trying to be the change you want to see, if you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved, there's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold And when you get there there's a hand to hold I believe when you taste down here through there's a place up there for people like Would all accepting the family please stand? Reverend Dr. Sonia True Wisdom officiating. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. 
And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. So let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. God of heaven, our almighty, loving God, who never creates a life in vain, nor fails to love one you have created. Comfort us, your children. Comfort us in our sorrow and eradicate the darkness which surround us in our loss. Sustain us in this hour of trial and preserve us Preserve within us faith like a child which believes and accepts your love and guidance. Comfort us with your presence and strengthen us so that sorrow shall not possess us. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. So good to know that we have the heart and the love and the peace to join together to celebrate and to remember the life of a beloved, the one who is held close and drawn near. The Lord is with us today. Because as you cry, he cries. And as you mourn, he mourns. And even as you sorrow, he sorrows. Because he says, nothing concerns you or happens to you that I am not familiar with. And so today we come and I say to you, cry, you must. It's a healthy thing to do. Physiologically, it is a healthy thing to do. Emotionally, it's a healthy thing to do. So cry, if you wanna cry. You have permission if you needed it. Weep, let those tears flow. It's a sign of strength, not weakness. Forget what they told you. Love on one another. Lean on somebody and let somebody lean on you and give thanks. Give thanks that you have the capacity to mourn, the capacity to love, the capacity to be joyful. Let the peace of God be with you today. Is that okay? Amen. All right, let us sing about the faithfulness of our God. Because somebody needs to testify in here today. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow 
of turning with thee thou changest not thy compassion they fail not as thou hast been I'll forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have need in thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me summer and winter and springtime and harvest sun moon and stars in their courses above join with all nature in many witness to thy great faithfulness mercy and love great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have need did thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness lord on to me pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide straight for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings oh mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed the hands have provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto Even in tough times and sorrowful times, you may be seated. Even when your heart is breaking, we can still confirm that God remains faithful to us. And if we pause a moment and look back over time, we can see those specific times when we thought it was over, when we thought we couldn't make it when we thought we had lost everything, but God's faithfulness showed up for us again and again. Does somebody in here know what it is I'm talking about? 
And God will remain faithful today and tomorrow and the next day, in the midnight hour, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening and at night, God is and will be faithful to you and you and you and you. Somebody say amen. amen. Always. Let's have our scripture reading at this time. We have two. Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah 41, verses 10 to 13. And then our New Testament reading from Revelations 21, 1 to 7. Amidst the circumstance, great morning to all. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah 41, verses 10 to 13. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my right, righteous right hand. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and say to you, do not fear, I will help you. Here ends a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Good morning. The second scripture is taken from Revelations 21, verse 1 through 7. <laughs> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who has seated on the throne, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He has said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. This is the word of the Lord. It is well with my soul. Praise the Lord. To the family. This is a song that I don't sing. The last time I sang this song, I was sitting where you were sitting, hearing it being played in front of my own mother's casket. And then I heard it again at my grandmother and then I heard it again at my aunt, 16 people after. 
And then about a year ago, my baby brother. Nothing to me sounded like it was well. But I'm standing here to tell you today, family, that although you grieve, be encouraged to know that your beloved soul is well. It is well. God bless you. When peace like a river a chain dead my way when sorrows like sea billows roar whatever It is well, it is well with my soul, though saved, turn should buffet, my face shall be shined, the clouds be back past the scroll the trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend even so My soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well. So it is well, it is well with my soul when peace like a river attended my way. Sorrows like sea billows roar. Whatever my light, Thou hast taught me here to say, it is well. It is well. We. My soul, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my. So, oh, 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 oh. it's all right to give God glory. It is well. It is well. With my soul. It is well. It is well. With his soul. It is well 
family Oh, with his soul Oh, it is well It is well with my soul Hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah Either you've got some hope or you don't. Either you've got something in you that will get you through this moment or you don't. If anyone is here and you don't, draw from what you're hearing and sense in today. Because even in the midst of a very terrible storm, he says he will shelter you with his righteous, strong arm. When God is on your side, who can be against you? Amen. It's not my time to preach it. So. <laughs> Behave myself. Hallelujah. The blessed assurance that we have deep on the inside that though the outside be torn apart, Yet we know with confidence it is well. I welcome Jonathan now to come and read the obituary for us. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jonathan and I'm Derek's son. I just wanted to share with you my dad that I knew and loved. As we gather today, it's not easy to say goodbye to a man like my dad. So I thank you for gathering here and sharing memories of my father with us. If you know anything about my father, he was a very punctual man. I've never witnessed him being late to anything, whether it's work, a flight, or God forbid, y'all were supposed to meet somewhere. You better be 10 to 15 minutes early before the arranged time or he would give you a stern stare so you're aware that you're late. <laughs> My dad loved traveling to Florida to his second home. I was able to spend some time there with him. This is when I noticed how dedicated he was and not for the reason you may think. So we went down to Florida after a hurricane and we had to find the house by using flashlights on the street signs since all the street lights were out. Of course, after the hurricane, there's debris and you know, insects may find their way into the house. So back to him being dedicated, I said this because I remember I called out to him saying there's a lizard in the room. At that moment, I saw an intense look in his eye like I've never seen before and he started violently chasing the lizard around the room trying to kill it <laughs> with his bare foot. He wasn't stopping until he got rid of that lizard. My best memories I can share about my dad are the last we shared for April Fool's Day. So every year, I tricked him, and he fell for it every time. The pranks never failed. I've gone from fooling him that I have a secret baby due in three months <laughs> to convincing him I was kicked out of school due to fighting to telling him a teacher put their hands on me. 
his hilarious laugh when he realized I fooled him was the best part. My dad was a hard worker and did so without complaining. Not one morning passed without him being up at the crack of dawn reading a newspaper. His work ethic would make you feel like such a slouch. My dad didn't take time off just because he had the amount of time to do so. He took time off because he was sick and in the hospital or something extreme like that. I could remember a time where he told me he had about six months of PTO added up. I don't know if he was joking or not, but with the amount of time he worked, I believed him. This is an, that's an example of how dedicated and consistent he was. So I travel often with I, I travel often, which my dad was conscious of, but he brought to my attention something that I wasn't aware of. He would always ask me, why am I always going to these Spanish-speaking countries, especially Dominican Republic, since I've been there a few times? Before I could even answer, he asked me if I was hiding a family there. <laughs> this is another example of his funny yet serious personality. So we actually started planning a trip to the Dominican Republic for when he retired. He would have retired three months from the day he passed. We have been talking about this trip for quite a while, and this is something we were both looking forward to. I could just imagine his reaction or how he would laugh when he heard me translate it for him, and that's one of the main interactions I was looking forward to. We had similar personalities. We didn't let things bother us. We say what we say when it's needed and keep it moving. His military career may have helped sh to shape that character his strength, his courage, his determination, his ability to maneuver without fear or his way of being heard but not seen. I listened, I listened to my brother Junior and he realized this is exactly how my dad was. Junior always said we're two sides of our father. My dad has put so many people needs before his own and it's something he did graciously. My dad has left me with two additional moms, Aunt Mary and Miss Bev. I'm so happy that these two are so similar to my mom. Some would say my dad had great taste in women. <laughs> I'm also proud that Derek Jr. is my brother and KV is my sister. My father also loved my mom's first son, Brandon, and Aunt Mary's daughter, Tweety Bird, very much. Although my dad is no longer here with us physically, he'll forever live on in our hearts. For everyone here and online, thank you for partaking in this homegoing service for my dad. He was a very private man, so he'd probably say, let's hurry and wrap this up now. <laughs> Even though you're gone, I know that your love for me will continue to live on in my heart forever. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to our home on God's celestial shore. I fly away. Oh, I fly away. Oh, glory. Fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land. Where joy shall never end, I'll fly away, oh, oh, oh. I'll fly away, oh, glory, I'll fly away in that morning when I die, 
Hallelujah, by and by. How flying away. Oh, oh, oh. How flying away. Oh, glory. I fly away in that morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. How fly away. Oh, 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 I fly away, oh glory, I fly away in that morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I fly away when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Anyone who came here today to have a bad time, I'm sorry to disappoint. Not today. All right. By the energy in this room, I can tell that you're all wanting to say something about this wonderful man. Um, so funny. When I got the call to come here and be with you today, um, Immediately, I started thinking about who we were going to celebrate. And um, once I got the program, I'm like, I know this man. And I kept on saying, perfect, perfect, perfect. And as I did, this warm feeling just came to me. I couldn't place until today where we met, um, which was at the home of Minister Edwards, when her father passed away. And uh, it's amazing how spirit does bear witness to spirit as to who we are. And um, it's a real thing. It's, I don't know, when you say it's a science, it's a mystery, but it's true. It works. So I bear witness today and, and come with a sense that I'm with family. I'm with somebody very close, not a stranger at all. So those of you who wish to share, now I am going to pull your coattail if you try to tell everything all at once. <laughs> you have to leave something to say at you know a later date when you're sitting around the table with the family or you, you know just want to call them at midnight. So come along now, please, and share some of those things in your heart that you, you need to share today. Yes, come on, please. I'm going to leave the microphone here, because when it stays here, you're shorter. Take the shorter I, time I'm around. short anyway. Well, you and me both. Hey, <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. How you doing, everybody? All right, thanks, sir. Wonderful. Derek, your Beverly thought of you today, but that is nothing new. Beverly thought about you yesterday and days before that, too. Mm-hmm. Mm Beverly thinks of her Derek in silence, and she often speaks your name. All Beverly has now are memories and your picture in a frame. Derek's memory is a keepsake from which Beverly will never part. God has you in his or her arms, Beverly, along with the remainder of us, each have Derek in our hearts. <laughs> I 
to God be the glory. Amen. Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So Derek was the first person I met when I arrived at City Hall in the City School District in New Rochelle just over seven years ago. He would often beat me there, which I found very odd. <laughs> and he'd just appear and scare the heck out of me. Um, he, uh, he was always courteous and kind. He went out of his way to say good morning and shake my hand every, every chance that he could. And to, the, to his son's comment, yeah, I think he had more than 60 days left to take. Uh, he was dedicated, he was there every day, and it was only extreme circumstances that, you know, it was very odd. If people are asking where Derek is, he's there a lot, right? So, good point on that. Um, after a couple of years, um, Derek would start to bring me bottles of rum for when he went on vacation. Um, some might have thought it was a bribe. I thought it was really good customer service. Um, Derek was always willing to help. I would ask Derek to fill in at other buildings when, when people had long absences planned. So Derek would be taken from City Hall and go to one of our buildings and fill in while they were absent and he would do an amazing job. His dedication to support of our, of our students and our staff was second to none. Derek would always say yes. I asked Derek one day why he didn't apply for a higher position and, and why he, he just wanted to be the, the cleanup guy, just fill in when needed. He said he loved working at City Hall and he liked working with adults. I, I knew what he meant. <laughs> um, so Derek was, seemed to be content at the time, but he was very proud and it showed in everything that he did. One day Derek asked how he could better himself and be transferred somewhere permanently so I said, sit down, which again, he was a very private man. I had to say, sit down, sit in my office. It's okay, I'm your boss. You can sit down, sit down. So we'd have a cup of coffee, we'd talk, we got close. His love of wrestling and some of the other things. My brother was also in the Marines, and I want to thank Derek for his service to our great country. But anyways, Derek was, was wondering how he could better himself. So we sat down, we talked about a process and a detailed plan, how to make him successful. Shortly thereafter, he, he transferred to one of our elementary buildings as a custodian where again, he served our students and staff with compassion and loyalty. Two words that just define who Derek was. Derek did this with the overall goal, and I remember him asking me, how do I better myself? I'm not sure what he did made him any better because he was already great. He was an amazing man. I am better. I'm a better person for just getting to know Derek and having the honor and privilege of dealing with him on a daily basis for the seven years that I was blessed with. Thank you all for having me today. This wasn't a plan. We spoke about this a long time ago. My name is Wayne David Franklin. I'm like a brother and a son to the family. Derek was a friend, a brother. Yes. There's two other young men I would like to call up here, Harold. Harold McDonald, would you come up here? Hopeton Brown. I didn't want to waste time. Mikey, would you come up here too? We all are Marines, ex-Marines. We went to school together. As a matter of fact, I lived in the Burford house. When Derek got cursed out, we all got cursed out. <laughs> when Derek got a whipping, we all got a whipping. We were like a crew that nobody couldn't separate. I went into the Marine Corps first, and everybody followed. <laughs> and 
I came out and I started working for the Board of Ed. He asked me, how is it? I said, you need a job to go find out yourself. <laughs> so we started working together. I retired first. It break my heart because I begged him to leave two years ago, but he said, no, you want to put me some more time. He wasn't finished. And when I got the news, I, I was told if I'm sitting down, if I'm standing up. At the time, I was laying down watching karate movies, and I told myself this is something important, so I took the TV off. It was my goddaughter, his niece. She said, Derek just passed away. I shut the phone off, waited a couple minutes, and called back. I said, what did you say? She said, your brother passed away. I immediately tried to call Hopeton, but he already had the news. I tried to call Harold. You want to take it over? I'm losing words right now. Hey, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Harold McDonald. Uh, I'm a little bit shocked because um, I don't know where to start. Um, I was in Florida the other day because I flew out here to come, you know, bury my brother. I can't believe it, but <laughs> um, what happened was um, I was outside in the lawn because, you know, I'm in Florida. I go back and forth. I'm a retired law enforcement. That uh, 30 years after I got out of the Marines, I was law enforcement for Westchester County. So I retired, and I'm back and forth to Florida. So I was in Florida, I was in the yard, and I don't know, I got this phone call. I wasn't going to answer it because I was outside of my yard. And I, was, I had like 21 trees. I'm, a, I'm a, like, I love farming. I love planting stuff and stuff. So anyway, I got a phone call from Tamika. I got um, Derek's niece, and then she's like, Harold. I said, what's your problem to me? Because she's like, oh, um, Derek died. I said, listen, I, I ain't got time to play, play with you. I'll talk to you later. And I hanged up the phone on her because I, I, I was shocked because I was like, what are you talking about? I just spoke to Derek a couple months ago and we was talking about retiring and, you know, I'm already retired. So I was like, come on, man, you got to retire. Enjoy yourself. And he's like, yeah, yeah, Harold, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do two more years. You know, this was two years ago. So I called him. I said, you know, you going to retire? He said, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. But when she called me, I was shocked because I was like, think she's playing around. I said, listen, this is not April Fool's Day. I ain't got time for it. Right? So I'm, I'm shocked because I'm like, what happened? And she's like, Derek has passed away. So anyway, I, I don't know. It took me like a whole couple of days to even acknowledge it. So I was just shocked. I'm like, still shocked. Because, you know, we Marines, we went into the Marine Corps, we went to Japan, went to Okinawa, you know, went to Camp Lejeune, you know, you know, back in the days, you know, he was, he was dating Mary, and uh, I was dating Mary's friend. So, you know, we was like, bro we, we was like brothers, and, brothers, and, um, you know, I went in the Marine Corps at 17, so just to let y'all know, you know, you know, we, we was players, we was having fun, you know, we young. So, and we had a great time. Mary loved him, you know, and, 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 and I'm telling you, he loved Mary. I, you know, I, I mean, we was like peaches and cream. So, I left, went to Japan. He was in Camp Lejeune. And um, after I was in Lejeune, uh, Camp uh, Okinawa, Japan, I see this guy, Derek came. I was like, wait a minute, what are you doing here? So, he followed me over there, too, in Japan. So, you know, we really had a bond. I don't, I, I, I don't want to take up the, everybody's time, but there's nothing I can say that the man was a great man. He was a neat freak like me. We military. Marines are neat freak. We, if, if you had something out of place, we're going to tell you, don't put it out there. Derek was like that. You know what I mean? Everything was neat, and he was a clean person. You know what I'm saying? So we got that from the United States Marine Corps. We're proud to be Marines. So I don't want to hold you all up, but I pass on to my other friends. Because I could talk all day. Just hope them around. <sighs> Good day, everyone. My name is Hopeton Brown. Uh, Derek and I go way back. High school, after high school, then in the military. We never served at the same location together. However, we kept in communication. And uh, we spoke with each other 
at least once a month and then we'll follow up with text messages or uh, voicemail. I'm not going to make this long. I just want to know that, uh, just want to let you guys know that uh, Derek's middle name is Hopeton. Mm -hmm. And the fact that my first name is Hopeton, we had a special bond there. He's a good friend of mine. We've done many things together served in the military. I think I'm the last one of the high school crew that served in the military, last retired, retired from the military. Uh, my brother in arms, Derek Burford, you're gonna be missed, well missed. So please hold a cold beer up there for me when I get there. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah. All right. Yeah, my name is Michael Walker. I met Derek from in the center when I came here. I was not in Marine, but we live a good life. He's always at my business place or the body shop every day when he used to be. So it's amazing uh, what I can say. He's, he's a great guy. Oh, I love do all kind of thing, fishing and doing all the jerk pork and everything. He was a master in that. So have a good life, my friend. And it's all blessed. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for visiting. My name is Aldean Graham. I'm the brother. I'm the sister for Derek. <laughs> it's really a pleasure to be here um, on this occasion. But my brother, you know, when I heard that he died, it was, um, it was just getting ready for work. I think it was 7 o'clock in the morning. I got a call from my sister. But before that, I spoke with my mother, and she told me Derek wasn't feeling too well. So I was busy, busy at work, and I asked my sister, just to follow up for me, just to make sure what's going on with him. And um, I called her, I said, did you follow up with Derek? Because I called, I couldn't get him. I said, she said, oh, I have to call. So I said, all right, just call. So I was, when I heard that he died, I felt so bad. Being in the medical field, I, I said, what if there is something that I could have done? You know, because if he had some kind of problem, obstruction or so, maybe in some way I could have helped. So I, I felt very bad, um, you know, about his death. I know I spoke to him a couple of months ago and we always talk, he's very strong with his talking, although I'm the eldest one. You know, he always tell me, so Aldine, make sure said this is done. And I remember when my father was alive, he always said, Make sure you do everything right, you know, to the others, because Dada, if Dada know, we're going to get beaten, meaning we're going to get spanking. But um, we always grow up together. He is really, a, I would say, a neat freak. We, we have to make the bed, make sure the bed is made properly and is straight and everything, the corners are tucked properly. We couldn't leave our shoes and we are chewing down. He always makes sure the drawers of clothes are fold up and everything like that. I remember, you know, when we were small, for some reason my other brother, he went out, you know, we were kids, he went out and he came back and he bought a dragon. And my father was very upset because he's saying that a dragon having alcohol in it. So he was very upset. And he said to my brother, spell dragon my brother couldn't spell dragon so me and Derek we were all we were in the living room and we were all talking and we were making writing down you know thing handed to him to see so he could see all the way to spell dragon and my brother he was kind of nearsighted like he couldn't see we was kind of far back because we couldn't let our father know what it was 
and we write, Derek write on a piece of paper, plain as ever, and I write and we hold it like this for him to spell dragon. He couldn't spell dragon. Now he get beaten, because my father beat him, said, you go out so you, you don't know how to spell dragon and you're drinking dragon. So my brother, after everything is said and done, he was so upset. Imagine I write it down plain so you could have seen it and you still get it wrong. But I'm sad, you know, I'm very sad because he's the one that followed me. I'm, I'm very sad of what happened. I just think in myself that if I was there, there was something that I could have do, you know, done to, to, you know, to save him. But I looked at him, God know best. And I looked at him and I know he will be there in heaven. I don't know when it's time for me to go in the dear Lord, but I will meet him. And I thought, thank you for everyone to be here. Thank you. Good day, good day, good day to each and every one. Um, Derek Cousin, we are two brother children. The family called me Sonia. Uh, it was so nice seeing all those soldiers. It was very nice. Very, very nice. Respect to you all. And to be off after family, I haven't seen Derek a good, uh, years, years, years. My cousin always called me Big Moat because I have a strong voice. And I, I, I'm stern almost like him, but um, in a different way. But my cousin was so unique in his own way. And he's a clean mother of the year. He's so neat. He's good. I like his style in a lot of ways. But, you know, death have a way to take our loved one away. To his wife, to his sons. I just want to wish you all, death is a must. It promised to each and every one of us. Right. It's just when it come, how it take us, it leave us sad. But remember him in the good time. Remember him in that love. Cause love continue and love is a action. And also, ay, ay, ay. It's sad, it's very sad, but um, there is a lot more family of him, brother and sister, nieces, nephew. Some is not here, cause some is away. But I just wanna give sincere to the wife, sons who are here. And he's off to a better place now. No more pain, no more suffering. So we just have to remember him in that goodness yes. and that good. Yes. Be blessed and blessed. Yes. I got the one minute sign, so I'm gonna hurry up quick. Um, my name is Dara, and I met Derek when I went to, when I started working in New Rochelle. And apart from his grandson, I'm probably the person who knew him the least amount of time in this room. But it just goes to show you that um, quality over quantity. So although I haven't known him for many years, I was the supervisor on the third floor, and the morning I met him, you know, Derek had this hearty laugh and big teeth. That's all I remember when he smiled was all of these teeth. And when I think back to our conversations, I think I did most of the talking. He would just say, eh, oh, eh, you know. <laughs> and I understood, I don't know. But no, 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 no. If it was something that upset him, but always respected, always on time, always early. And it, it, I don't know if anyone knew, but he liked to cook. So whenever we had celebrations, I had never had jerk turkey before. Jerk chicken, jerk. He would make us a jerk turkey every year. And I said, you're going to make a jerk turkey? And the first time he brought the turkey, it was flat. And I said, Derek, what is this? And he said, no, man, no, man. You got to bust it open. But um, Every year he would uh, do that for us. And you know, the Derek in the picture, 
That's the Derek that I remember because he was private, but he talked about Florida. And I, everybody had pictures of that house and the pool. And whenever he went to Florida and there was a flood, we knew about it. And the last thing I'm going to say about Derek is, you know, um, as a woman, they tell you when you're looking for qualities in a man, look how he treats his family. But more so how he treated his mother and the love he had for his mother and the way he took care of his mother. So to all of you, um, I know this is very sad and everyone is going to miss Derek, but I still hear him in my head. Eh. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you. Good day, everyone. My name is Everard O'Neill, but most people know me as Baita. But I'm here today to say a few words for my very good friend. Derek and I grew up in Jamaica, a little district called Meta Grove, St. Mary. I used to live on the hill, he used to live on the flat. The both homes were separated by a small road and a river. Even though our parents were very strict, we would find time to sneak away to go to the river and the bushes and have fun. Those memories I'll cherish forever. Now, Derek has gone. He has touched so many people's life. He will never be forgotten. He's gone to a place of eternal rest where we'll feel no more pain. He'll never go hungry and he'll never thirst. We will forever remember his name because he has left a legacy for us to cherish forever. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine on him. Thank you very much. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, my life, you have been faithful. Oh, my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able and I will sing of the goodness of God. I loved your voice. You have kept me through the fire. In the darkest times, you are closer than no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, and I will sing of the goodness of God. And we say, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out. It's running out to me. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so. 
show so good with every breath that I am able and how will see of the goodness of God and how will see of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God so when my grandbaby was about three years old three four years old around there She'd fall, graze herself, get a little stick or something, and especially if she saw blood. It didn't matter if there were a hundred well wishes in the room. It didn't matter if you had the doctor, the nurse, the surgeon in the room. There was only one person who could get her to be calm and to believe that she wasn't going to die. Her nana. There are times in our lives when we need a parent, someone close to us, to say certain things to us. And although, the, you know, there may be the signs held back, <laughs> I think that's such a beautiful example, <laughs> a wonderful story. Although others may have a neon sign or be perfectly qualified to tell us what they need to tell us, still we need to hear that we're going to be all right from a specific people. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There are times when, even though we know things, right, we have the knowledge, we have the expertise, but still certain things doesn't register in the heart until we hear it from a person. In the Old Testament passage of Isaiah, we find God speaking to his people like a father. And he makes certain assumptions in the verses read. And you can hear him, listening to him as daddy talking. Child, don't worry, don't be afraid. He knows that we're going to get frightened at times. Huh? He knows we're going to be anxious. And for all we know, for all we sing today, for all we hear, that anxiety is going to come to us at some time or other. What we do then matters. It's not the fact that we become afraid. It's not the fact that we get anxious. It's what we do once we are that matters. And to help us do what we need to do, to help us be how we need to be, we need to hear clearly the voice of our Heavenly Father. And in those dark moments, in those midnight hours, I, I, I'm always amazed and I still don't understand it that we feel more pain when it gets dark. We feel more pain at night than we do in the day. But our Heavenly Father says, do not be afraid. Don't worry. And he doesn't just leave it there. He says, listen, I'm the one. I, God, am the one who's telling you. Don't be afraid. Why? Because I am the one who helps you. To all of you family, Beverly, Derek, Jonathan, Khadija, sisters, cousins, 
friends. Our Lord is saying to all of us today, what you feel is real. And you can't avoid it. You can't circumvent it. You gotta go through it. Because it's part of our human experience. But while you're going through this strong human experience, know that, as we'd say from where we come from here, daddy -o. Pops, Papa, Daddy says, go through, but don't be afraid. I got you. I've got you. And then he tells us why. He says, don't be afraid because I've prepared a place for you. You pass through this life and you feel the pain and then you transition and then you wonder, is there really something that comes after this? Is that all there is? And he says, uh-uh, no. Let me tell you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you will be also. My brothers, my sisters, that's, death is not the end. It's a new beginning. It's a transition into some place with the God, the creator, the almighty, the sustainer of all life. And if we think about it, you know, we read in scriptures of people living 900 years old and so on. I'm like, dear God, how did they do it? <laughs> when I think of what we have to overcome in this life, when I think of memories that we need to, we would like to erase, when I think of situations we'd like to do again, and to have three, four hundred years to rumorate on that, I, I, I don't know, I don't think, I, I'd rather not. <laughs> However, he says, once you leave this life, you're coming to me. And, and as I think of my granddaughter, that there are actual times when I would take my fingers and just wipe, okay, baby, Stop the crying. She's 17 now, and I now I say, stop the crying, man. <laughs> he says, I will wipe the tears. I will soothe you. I will be your comfort. I'll rock you. I'll hold you. I will embrace you for as long as you need it. I'll be right there with you always. The promise he has made to us and the promises of God are yea and amen. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, if you remember nothing from this celebration, if you remember nothing from this time of saying thank you to God for such a wonderful gift that he has given you through Derek Hopton Burford. And that he was eulogized in this place where one can feel the love and feel the embrace where even in this place you're being held by one another. I don't sense any frenemies up in here. I sense a very strong friendship, love and kindness in this room. I sense that the truth is being told here. To add to that truth is that God knew this would happen before it happened. He prepared a place for Derek before he needed a place. And he received him to himself. He is now enjoying the vision of God for eternity. And he pre prepared the place so that you also could join him when your time came. Just like you go to Florida, he had a room there for you, so there's a room for you. 
No hurricane there, though. And no lizards. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I don't know about that. At least I won't be afraid of the lizards. Put it that way. <laughs> Would you hold that dear to you that Derek is all right? And you'll be all right too. I don't know how other way I could say that. Because your heavenly father got him and he got you. And he don't just got you so, so, so. He says he got you by his righteous right hand. My father was a southpaw boxer, so he hit you harder with his left than he did with his right. So if the Lord has got you with his righteous right hand, be careful who comes <laughs> to the left because you're going to get hurt. <laughs> Beloved, be blessed. Take a deep breath and relax in the presence of God. And remember, you will feel pain because it's a natural part of mourning. If you don't feel pain, call me. Because maybe there's something wrong. Because if you love, you will hurt. You will feel hurt. But it's a good thing. It says that you are alive and you are well. He says, what you have experienced was real, it was true. It wasn't a myth. God loves you. God has prepared for you. And nothing that happens to you goes without his knowledge. And what else there is to be experienced here in this life, he has also prepared for you. That you will go through, you will come through, and you will stand. And you will stand stronger than you were before you went through. Can I pray with you? So God, who knows all things, you who have taken Derek from school to the Marines, to New Rochelle, and to this place, you who have given him love, children, you who have allowed him to transition in the arms of his beloved. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his presence on this planet. We thank you for what he has given to others and what he has received from them. And today we commend him back into your care. And we have that assurance that you will take good care of him. I also commend into your care those he has left behind, those who will cry from time to time. Would you wipe the tears from their eyes? Would you hold them? Would you stand alongside them? Would you allow them to hear your words in their ear and feel your presence wherever they are? Letting them know that you are with them at all times. Never to leave and never to forsake them. We bless you that you have blessed them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. And all of God's people say, Amen, amen. amen. and Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sh
sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How did that grace appear the hour I first believed when we been there to thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to see God's face then when we first be praise God praise God praise God praise God, 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 Almighty God, you who strengthen your children with your holy presence, hear us now and give us faith to go forward. We pray with our Lord that your will shall be done in all things. Let us perceive your will today and grasp it by faith. O oh, Savior, you have suffered with us, for as there has been pain and death in our lives, so has there been a crown of thorns and a cross in yours. Therefore, we know that you are near when we are afflicted. So we pray that you will guide us in our grief, just as you conquered the cross with the resurrection, gently guide and lead us from darkness to the light in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and always. And we say amen. 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 amen.
This concludes the service of celebration of life for your beloved Derek Hopeton Burford. I'd first like to take this opportunity to thank Reverend Dr. Sonia True Wisdom for her comforting words and prayers which she has shared with you. Certainly we are grateful for our organist, Mr. Douglas, our vocalist, Talia King, Derek's co-workers, his friends, his neighbors, and for everyone else for playing your individual roles in making this time of transition somewhat easier for his family. To Derek's family, once again on behalf of the Harvey Edwards family and our entire staff here at Eternity Funeral Services, we continue to encourage you. Friends, on tomorrow morning we will meet here at 9 a.m. We will have devotion and then we will proceed to the Calverton National Cemetery. At this time, we're going to allow an opportunity for the final viewing. I'm going to ask that you carefully follow the instructions of Mr. Morris standing in the rear. After you have viewed, the family have made preparations for you upstairs in our multipurpose room. I'm going to ask that after you have viewed, you'll go through the hallways. There is an eternity team member, my mother, Winsome Harvey. She is standing waiting to give you directions to go upstairs to the multipurpose room. Final viewing. If you miss me, don't come searching. If you don't find me, just know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in a twinkling of an eye. Oh, if you miss me, don't come searching. If you don't find me, then know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come knocking at my door. I'll be gone in the twinkling of an eye. Oh. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God gathered at home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints of God gathered at home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Some sweet day, I'm going away, I'm going to leave this world, no more to roll. Some sweet day, when life is over, some sweet day, I'm going away. Some sweet day, I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world, no more to roam. Some sweet day, when life is over. Some sweet day, I'm going away. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. 
Walking with the angels. Sing glory, hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Oh, we shall have a grand time up in heaven. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. Walking with the angels. Sing glory, hallelujah. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. Have a grand time. When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory. If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you
is a place up there for people like you. If you stand up 